Day Creations podcast. My name is Kirsty and I'm coming to you from the west coast of Scotland and this is episode 64. So, I don't really know where to start. Um, I was meant to podcast last weekend uh, but I wasn't in a good place mentally to do it and I was just wanting um, a weekend to myself. Also, last weekend was the first weekend I'd seen Scott in four months. So I seen him on the Friday into the Saturday and then he left Saturday night because Scott works on Sundays. So I was just like, nah, it's not happening. My priorities were to spend time with my fiancé, who I had not seen in four months. So I'm sure you can all understand that. Um, so yeah, decided to record today. Today is Sunday the 19th of July. It's coming up for about lunchtime, so you may or you may not hear my stomach rumble at some point. But yeah, uh, I just wanted to come on and have a good catch up with everybody. Uh, I don't have any finished objects to share. I've got half finished objects. Um, I've got quite a bit of squishy acquisitions to show off. Well, I guess I have a finished object if you include spinning as a finished object. I don't know. We're winging it, folks. We're winging it. And I have a nice hot cup of tea beside me. Mm. Nom, nom, nom. Okay, so. I'm so not in a podcasting mode just yet. I'll probably get into the swing of things the more I talk. Uh, but I guess just maybe I'd start with a general catch up. Um, I had four days, three days off work. I had Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of the week just passed off work. And Scott took the same days off, but he only took Wednesday, Thursday because he doesn't work Fridays. Um, and we spent four days together, which was really, really nice. We just caught up. Um, we didn't go anywhere. Like, I'm too anxious to go into, like, shops and stuff if I don't have to. So we went a couple of walks. I got re-sunburnt. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, where else did we go? The furthest we went was up to where it's called Brayhead. Um, and we went to Sainsbury's um, just to get like a wee food shopping in and then we went to Costa because I really wanted hot chocolate we just get drive through, we don't get, we don't sit in um, and yeah we just had some really nice time, we were watching movies, we were just having a good catch up we had a really good blather and yeah it was really really nice so that's that's been the last couple of days he left yesterday uh, again, because he works on Sundays. And we're still saving for a house. <laughs> we might get it this time, this side of the year. Um, but it might, might move over to the start of next year by the time we get everything saved up. That's my phone. It is on silent. Uh, but yeah, that's been that. I go back to work tomorrow. Uh, it's been nice to have a good couple of days off, but um, gotta go back to reality at some point. And yeah, my next lot of annual leave isn't until September now, so I feel a wee bit more refreshed, which is always good. Haven't had, I haven't done a lot of crafting, even though it looks like I have a lot to show. Um, when I get in a mentally crappy spot in my life and my Crohn's kind of goes a bit crazy. I don't have the energy to craft and then um, because I hadn't seen Scott really in the last, well, I'd seen him last weekend but because I haven't seen him in four months I didn't want to just sit and knit around him all the time so I haven't done too much crafting. But I still have quite a portion of stuff to show you. So we'll start with um, the spinning finished objects and uh, I'll start with the smallest one which is this one here. This, uh, so I, I started doing Tour de Fleece this year just to see if I could, because every year I've done it I have failed essentially. Um, 
and kind of just not gone back to it and yeah like I'll, I'll manage like the first couple of days and then I'll just kind of fall off and be like nah so I was making a conscious effort to spin for at least 15 minutes a day and I had chosen two bats that I had purchased at Edinburgh Yarn Festival the last Edinburgh Yarn Festival um, from Spin City and I started by spinning one up on one bobbin and then I spun the other up on a different bobbin and then I decided to just do a simple two ply and this is what I had but I had more on one bobbin than I did on the other so when it came to those leftovers I decided I would just chain ply them together um, I have an Andean plying tool where you could make an Andean bracelet. Two seconds. Um, so yeah, I have an Andean plying tool where you can make an Andean bracelet and I could have done a two ply that way with the other scheme but I just decided to do a chain ply. But this one here, this is just a simple two ply and I really like it. I feel like this is quite like a mermaid type yarn. Um, there's some slubby bits in it. You can see here. Um, and it's got, it's either silk or milk. Milk, milk protein? I don't know if that's right. And I think there's also some soy in this as well. Um, I don't know the content, they don't, it didn't come with any sort of uh, tag and I think there's also, there was also some Angelina, uh, Angelina fibre in it as well because there's some sparkle in some parts and I just, I, overall I just really really like how this has turned out. I've got no idea what I'm going to do with it, it's probably going to stay in this form for a wee while. Uh, I do need to set the twist. So that just involves blocking it and I've not over or under spun it by the looks of it. It seems quite a balanced yarn so I don't think I need to thwack it which is a shame because it's so fun to do. <laughs> but yeah I've got no idea what I'm going to make with it but uh, whenever it decides to be something pretty it's, it's going to be pretty. Uh, it's a bit of a thick and thin yarn and um, there's some bits where like for here for example uh, that's probably going to be classed as like a chunky and yet they're like just slightly further over there's one that would be classed more of a four ply and then there's definitely sections <clears throat> in here that would be classed as a lace weight so here's one for example if I can pull it out so yeah it's definitely thick and thin. I'm okay with that. I was not spinning this for any sort of consistency. I was just spinning it to get back into spinning in general because I actually spun this on my Ashra Joy, which I've not used in quite some time. And I'd stopped using it because of the issues I was having with my back. And then it seems like whatever that issue was has its moments here and there. But recently it's been there, so I've not, I've been okay, I've not been experiencing any sort of pain. Um, and then at first I was a wee bit worried because when I started spinning the first night I was just like, oh I'm getting really bad pains in my wrists, I'm getting a bit of pins and needles, that, that's, the, that's the start of my carpal tunnel. And then I realised I think it was just the angle I was spinning at. The seat I was on was too high. And it was causing me to sit in a way that was really quite uncomfortable. So I moved into the living room and I was sat on the sofa, which is lower. And I was very aware of how I was holding my wrists. And it's just made the whole experience so much better. I've, I've really enjoyed spinning these. I've really enjoyed being back on the Ash for Joy. Um, that's not to say I don't enjoy my e-spinner, because that's how I applied them. I applied them on the e-spinner, but I spun them on the joy. So yeah, this is my this is my two-ply. 
I haven't counted, I haven't estimated the meterage and I haven't weighed it either but um, I reckon this is going to be about 150 grams which is pretty good and then this is my chain ply I love this this is not going to become anything apart from a necklace. I would put it on now, but I have overspun this. This is not a balanced yarn. This needs soaked and thwacked to set the twist. But I am going to wear this as a necklace because I really adore this. I think this would look really lovely. Um, I'll show you just how overspun it is. So. If you watch the bottom, so that's that's overspun, and that's because I haven't done a chain ply in quite some time. So this is how I would wear it. See, it, wouldn't it just look really, really lovely as a necklace? So I haven't done a chain ply in quite some time, so I was kind of faffing around just a little bit and then the strands were becoming un um, were breaking apart which was causing a lot of issues when it was coming to plying it so it needs soaked and thwacked and hung out to dry and hopefully it will make it a more balanced yarn and then I might put some ribbon on it and then I will turn it into a necklace yeah I'm really really happy with this one and it's really it's really kind of sparked that love that I actually really enjoy doing a, th uh, a chain ply you just have to make sure your single is spun really well and you don't have the issue that I had where it was breaking so yeah that's my spinning I don't have anything new on the wheels I need to find some fibre I have. Let's go with misplaced. Lost is, <laughs> lost is true, but I know it's in the next room. Misplaced is probably a better word. So yeah, I've misplaced some fibre. Um, it's actually some Rolags that I had made. Um, so I'll find them. Maybe. <laughs> I need to... Uh, sort through some stuff in my room because I'm getting uh, a new unit uh, next week. Is it the first week in Mo August? I'm not sure now. I still love this mug. Um, yeah, I'm getting a new unit in my room. Uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't come till the first of o the first week of August and it's just going to make storage just so much better and I will prob probably find the fibre I'm looking for when, when I'm doing that clean out but I'm hoping to find it sooner because I need a new Tour de Fleece project as if Tour de Fleece is even still running I have no idea but I'm really enjoying making that 15 minute time slot for spinning every day and I'm, I was normally doing it on my lunch break um, when I was working so it, it was feasible, it was doable and it became routine as well which really made it easier to do. Okay so to say I have a couple of half finished objects is not actually correct now that I'm looking at everything. I have one half finished object and that's a sock for my mama bear. I have got a feeling I've already shown this off. Oh, I don't know now. The next one is here. I am up to the heel flap. So the wool I'm using is this one. Um, oh, so that's, that is the colourway name on the front. Right, okay. Uh, it's wall butt and uh, this one is the Mosel, Mosel. Uh, it's a 75-25 yarn, uh, you get 420 metres in 100 grams 
and I have come to the conclusion that this is just a little bit thicker than your standard sock yarn. I don't know if that's when people would start calling it sport or if it's literally just a teeny tiny bit thicker because I've been getting really good gauge um, on a 2.5 millimeter, which is a hook size, a hook size, which is a needle size up from what I would normally knit my socks on. Um, I've known for some time now that to make my mum comfortable pair of socks, I either need to go up a stitch count, so instead of 64, I would do 68, or I need to go up a needle size. So in this occasion, I tried both. I have gone up to 2.5 millimetre and I have gone up to 68 stitches. And I have had her try on the front one that's finished and she said it fits really, really well. So I'm really curious as to how these are going to wear. Will they stretch out just a little bit and become too loose? Or um, will they shrink a little bit in the first wash? I'm not 100% sure. It shouldn't because it's super wash. Um, well actually no, it doesn't say super wash. It just says 75% wool, 25% polyamide. So it might shrink. I need to be very careful on that first wash. Um, if they shrink, if they shrink a little bit, it shouldn't be that bad because I've gone up a stitch count and up a needle size. And normally, I only need to do one of those. So here's hoping. I can't cross my fingers very well in that hand. I can do it really well in that one. So here's hoping these work because what I want to do. Um, is make her a couple of pairs and gift her them at Christmas time. So glad I said that then because I can hear her just walking down the hall. So no one tell her. Shh. So yeah, these are going to my mama bear. She really likes them. She loves handmade socks. She doesn't really wear them in summer. Uh, so that's why I'm making them now so that they'll be ready for Chris uh, for winter. Um, and hopefully she'll get a really good amount of use on them. So I'm currently actually knitting these <laughs> with three different types of needles. So at the moment I am using some Knit Pro Zing's DPNs. On the inside though I am using some 9 inch circulars which are the higher higher sharps which wow do they hurt. They do not lie when they call them sharp. Um, and then to do the toe, I actually go on to some uh, Knit Pro, oh I don't know the make of those ones, Carbons? I think it's Carbons, uh, on a very large uh, circular cable, I think it's 100 centimetres. Um, I don't know why I've used so many different needle types, but it just seemed the easiest way to do it. Uh, but I have actually ordered uh, replacements for the high higher sharps. You can't really see it on my finger anymore, but there was a big dent up under the nail um, where the needle had gone under the nail and into the skin um, when I was knitting. and. Boy does that hurt and it hurts when you do it about five or six times. Um, so I've ordered a 2.5 millimeter Chiao Goose on a 9 inch circular because those are my preferred 9 inch circulars. Um, they're just they're also just my preferred needles but I can't afford to get a set of Chiao Goose, that's a lot of money. Um, but because I knit so many socks I can justify the £10 for the nine inch circulars. So just waiting on those arriving, hopefully they'll be here by Wednesday. Um, but by then I should have the heel flap finished and I'll probably try and just keep working on the gusset. And um, But I have had to change how I knit so I now keep, kind of keep this finger up like that and it, it kind of hurts after a while. So uh, the sooner I get the, the new child goes the better for my finger. <laughs> But yeah, I really like how this yarn is turning out. I'll show it better in this one. I like this striping. It's it's quite a nice sock, like just that wee pop of colour. I've just done a I have parted heel. 
and then a gusset. I always increase one stitch just here, um, just to kind of close up the gap. Um, and then I've done a standard wedge toe. So yeah, that's that. <laughs> I don't know where to put anything. More tea for it was called. Okay, so my next project is another sock, but this one is for me. I'm trying something a wee bit different. So I started this toe up and then using my outline for my fish lips kiss fish lips kiss heel, nearly said fish lips kiss hiss. Um, using that cut out, I've put in where I think my afterthought heel should go and then I've continued up because I really liked how this was striping but I've noticed something quite interesting about this yarn is it starts with small stripes and then it goes into big stripes and then it goes back into small stripes here and then it goes back into big stripes. Um, you can probably see it better on that side. So small stripes, big stripes, small stripes, big stripes. And this is another one of the wall but No, don't go Mickey. Um, and this one is in the Ravensburg colour. Uh, these are yarns I got down in the yarn shop in Blackpool and I've not been able to get them since uh, but when I was down I purchased a whole whack of them because these were only £1.50 which is phenomenal for sock yarn so I purchased quite a few whilst they had them because they haven't had them back in since I just, I just think this is really nice, bright and cheery. Um, I have stitch markers. One here which I love. So this is a Kodama. And this is a wee Totoro. Uh, I got those from Yarnistry. So yeah, all I have to do on this one now is pick up the stitches for the Afterthought heel. Take out the scrap yarn, which is the blue and then pop in an afterthought heel and I'm thinking of actually putting it in on a solid colour uh, maybe black but I think that might dull down the colours just a bit I'm not 100% sure but I, I know I want to put in a solid colour instead of trying to put in the stripes because I could end up with pretty much all one colour because the stripes ca are, can be quite deep so we'll see but I really like it. I've really enjoyed knitting those. I started knitting that uh, for a trip through to Edinburgh with Scott on Thursday. We went through to the gluten-free bakery we both like, which is called Sugar Daddies. And yeah, uh, it was car knitting and then it was movie knitting because we sat in bed watching movies. So still to cast on the second one, this is just the first one, but I want to get the heel done first before I cast on the second one because if I don't cast on the heel now, I will never cast on the heel. <laughs> Alright, so next work in progress is my, oops, is my blanket. I'm not going to unravel it all too much, so this shows where I left off. And I've got a good couple of rows in since. Uh, works out as eight rows, so not not too much, uh, but still enough. I tend to try and work on this on Sundays, so it's scrappy Sundays, um, and it's still still fairly quite but quite a big ball, but it's getting smaller. And I've looked out some scraps to add in and then I can add in some leftover sock yarn as well um, as long as it's kind of got the same feel as opal I don't want to add in nice soft yarn because this feels like quite a I don't know I just I love the feel of opal it's such a nice feeling yarn and I want this blanket to have the same feel throughout and also so it has the same drape because if I start adding in different yarns it could 
change the shape of it, it could change the drape of it and I don't want that, I just want it all in the one type of yarn. So yeah, it's growing slowly but surely, the height of my head. <laughs> um, it will get there, it's a long term project. This is in my Flu Fanta bag, also by Yarn Mystery. I swear she doesn't sponsor the podcast. Okay, so my next two projects are for the I Am Worth It Mao, which I am running with Deborah of Diary of a Physicist Farm Girl. I said it right first time. Um, so the I Am Worth It Mao is to allow you to make time for yourself. Um, it's basically her saying is you can't can't pour from an empty cup, which is 100% true, you can't, you just can't, um, and I know that from just the last couple of days, where my body has just crashed out, I actually had to go for a nap the other day, I was just that gone, like my body just kind of shut down, so the I am worth it Mal is to make time for yourself, it's to allow you to make something for yourself as well, like you can't take part in this Mal if the finished project is not going to be for yourself. It has to be for yourself. So I've got two projects on the go. I don't really count socks as the I am worth it Mal because I make so many socks for myself as it is. Um, but I've got two on the go just now and I'm going to try and just keep it at the two because I feel like what I had in my head was maybe too optimistic and I don't want to beat myself up if I don't get them done because that's the complete opposite of this Mal. Um, so both mine are knitting projects, but that doesn't mean you can't crochet, you can't weave, you can't bead some jewellery, you can't do candle making or baking. This mal is for any type of craft, any type whatsoever. You could do flower arranging. We don't care. Cross stitching. It's as long as it's for you and you're making time for yourself. So self care. So my first one is in this gorgeous bag, which is made by Ellen, which is Callop Chic Ellen. Um, and it is this pattern. Try not to get too much glare. So this is a Sublime Isabella DK pattern. I purchased this at my LYS last summer and it is made out of this absolutely gorgeous uh, merino and cotton yarn. It's a very off grey, like very pale grey, not off grey sorry, very very pale grey with um, some, I'm gonna sneeze, <laughs> oh come on, uh, it's got some strands of white in it but overall there is um, a, an off, why do I keep saying off grey, a pale grey undertone to it. It's just really gorgeous, it's so soft and it's going to be really beautiful and I am this much into it. So this is actually the sleeve, so it will be folded over and sewn up and it's a very boxy oversized garment um, that was just going to be great for throwing on in hot weather or even cool weather because cotton and the merino would keep you nice and warm as well. And it's got this really gorgeous lace detail the whole way through. And then once you get to the part where you need your neck, there's this center column that you'll divide. And you'll work one side and then you'll work the other side. So yeah, it's really, really beautiful. I'm on the second ball out of seven. Yeah, I think I've got seven balls of this. Um, but I'm actually thinking of going down a size because I don't want it too, too baggy because um, for the size I'm knitting, it's going to have 10 inches of positive ease. That's a lot of positive ease in my eyes. Uh, so I'm thinking of going down a size, which means it will only have 8 inches of positive ease, which isn't as much. I just think it's really nice. Um, I've had to rip out a row or two and go back and fix it because I had knit the wrong row. Um, I'm not so used to patterns like this, I'm used to indie written patterns. Um, I know that's a first world problem right there. 
uh, but also it's just because I don't have something to mark the row, so I sometimes just flip my and my camera stopped. So don't know where it quite finished off, but my first world problem is that I'm so used to indie written patterns, um, which are slightly easier to follow than this um, layout. Um, so I've had to go back a row or two and re-knit it. Um, but I have started trying to make sure I'm putting something on the pattern and um, moving it down when I finish a row. Uh, which is making definitely making it easier. <laughs> so yep, I'm on the second ball of seven and I really think this is going to be absolutely gorgeous when it's finished. I could see me knitting a second one depending how the first one goes but I'm already thinking of making some slight adjustments. Uh, just to how it's knitted, I would maybe uh, take out one of the lace repeats, make the sleeve just a wee bit slimmer. Um, I would knit, knit the sleeve in the round to begin with and then split off. But yeah, that's just me. Because I could, I could genuinely see me making another one of this if um, Mary still stocks this when it comes to winter. Because I think it's going to take me a while to get these all finished. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how this one goes. I don't want to get all, like over my like way above my neck in projects, um, and not be able to finish stuff. But yeah, I really really like this. This is really really nice. It's so soft and it's just going to be amazing to wear. But I will need blocked because of the lace. Which is fine. I just don't like blocking things. Pop that away. Okay, so my last big project, which has been kept in this amazing bag, which is Bags by Joe, or So Can Joe, sorry. Um, Joe and I have done a swap, but I'm so bad that I haven't even sewn hers yet. And it's just because I finally got to see Scott. My annual leave was spent with Scott and then my body just went not doing anything. So I really need to get on that. I feel horrific that I haven't done it but I know she understands and I am still so sorry Jo, I will get on to it. I have to do some sewing for masks so I will get your bag done, I promise. But I really adore this bag. It is way more than I thought I was going to get. I thought I was just going to get kind of like a standard size bag but this bag has allowed me to put so much in it and I love it. I really really love it. So in here is my love note. I love this. So this is my love note sweater. I'm almost finished. Or have I finished? I have finished. <laughs> I thought I hadn't finished the lace, but I have. Wow, that's that definitely makes me happy. I genuinely thought I wasn't finished the lace. <laughs> okay, so apparently I'm finished the lace and I'm doing the raglan increases, hence the stitch markers that you may or may not be able to see. And yeah. I can't believe that. I thought I had so much more to go. <laughs> so this is the Love Note Sweater by Tin Can Knits. Um, I'm a little bit worried about how wide this is, but I know you do go back because it is on uh, a provisional cast on. So I'm hoping that when it gets to that neckline that's going to really cinch in just a wee bit. Just to like have this, like I don't want it super close to the neck. Just as wide as my v-neck magpie. Because uh, that's... That's the width of my shoulders. Like that's... That's not wearable. But, um... I haven't read ahead in the pattern too much. I'm just hoping that it'll be brought in. And there'll be quite a lot of decreases. But we'll see. So yeah, this is being knit with... Rowing Kids Silk Case. And this? <laughs> oh, what's the name of this yarn? Came in a cone. Came in a big cone. I ordered it 
online. Oh, why do I not know this? I'll put it down. I can't remember for the life of me what this yarn is. Um, it's one that's got a wee bit of spinning oil still in it, so it will bloom because it's very thin, very, very thin. Uh, but it blooms up really, really well. It's perfect for colour work. <sighs> that way I've got the website. I, I can picture the website that I ordered it from. I can picture their name, but I can't say it out loud. You can buy it on, in cakes of 50 or cones of 500. And I bought the red in a cone. I bought black in a cone. And I'm pretty sure I bought white in a cone. And then I bought a ton of other colours in 50 gram yarn. 50 grams. And I'll probably put another order in soon because I put in a big order before the whole Briggs shit thing. And um, I'm probably going to put another one in before December. And put a big order in. Because I really like working with this. So yeah, I'm really happy to find out I'm a lot further than I thought I was. <laughs> oh, the small things in life. Uh, so yep, yeah, I'm gonna, I try and do a project a day. So I'll work on, say, tomorrow's Monday, I'll work on the love note on Monday, I'll work on the Isabella DK sweater on Tuesday, I will work on some socks on Wednesday, and I'll rotate this. But I've got a couple of other things I want to work on as well at the moment and I've got a couple of things I really want to start as well. One of them is a new blanket project, but I have five, five blanket projects on the go right now. Five! I've got my crochet granny square blanket, I've got another crochet granny square blanket that hasn't been touched in forever. I'm talking at least four or five years. I haven't worked on it at all since Scott and I have been together and that's four years. Um, I've got the mitered square blanket I inherited from my mum, which is not the Cozy Memories blanket because these squares are made individually and then put together, which I might stop doing because that's going to be a lot of sewing up. Um, I've got my wool eater blanket that I think I'm going to rip out and reorganise the yarn so that could take me down to four and then I also have my North Easterly blanket so that's five five blankets I want to I have on the go and I want to start another one which is part of what my acquisitions are so I'm going to show you my acquisitions and then I'm going to backtrack to actually more knitting um, and I have a reason for that so let's put this out of the way and let's bring in all the yarn I had to put furthest away from me. Okay. So, oh, ooh, I, that scared me. That was the chair. Oh, if this chair breaks, I'm in trouble. <laughs> okay, so, treated myself to some yarn. I haven't bought yarn in four months. I was so focused on saving for a house and I didn't treat myself to anything. But I'm I'm a depression shopper, I'm not gonna lie. Whenever my mood gets really, really bad or my depression really starts to surface, I like to treat myself. And I haven't done that in four months and then all of a sudden I, I didn't have an influx of money, but I had money left over from my wage that month and I thought you know what sack this I'm buying some stuff so first thing I bought was some yarn from Helen of Giddy Yarns and if you'll remember Helen was kind enough to offer yarn support for one of my sock patterns so you can head on over to currently only my Ravelry for that pattern uh, I do hope to get that changed soon. So I seen Helen was having a kind of um, bargain, she didn't want to call it a bargain bin, that's not right, a discount section 
and that makes me sound so cheap because I am I am willing to pay full price for yarn and I have put in another order with her um, but I just went on to see what she had and I just fell in love with what some of the things she had so I'm quite a big advocate right now for 50 gram skeins so I got oh you can't see that that's really pro night I got this one which is poppy it's really gorgeous and it's just it's very subtle it's really really nice if anything it reminds me of raspberry ripple ice cream uh, so it's got like hints of red, like pops of red, like here, and which then kind of fades into a, like a pink. And this is on her super wash, seventy five percent super wash merino, twenty five percent nylon, and there is two hundred and twelve meters in fifty grams. So that's perfect for socks. And then I got another fifty grams in dandelion, which again is another very subtle color. I really really like it. And this one has um, pops of green, uh, speckles of orange, which is really gorgeous. Um, kind of like a brownie, brownie green parts of it as well. Um, and it's just really, it's really, really gorgeous. It's really, really subtle. that dandelion and then I had to get this one and I don't really know why because zombies terrify me this is undead but I love it like I could genuinely see this in a hat so the grey has kind of like splodges of red well so does the green the green has splodges of red as well and to me it's just zombie I don't know, I think that's a plane going overhead if you could hear that. Um, it screams zombie to me, it really does. But zombies scare the bejesus out of me. Like, I can't watch zombie movies at all. Um, but I really just like this colourway. And I just had to have it. So this is 75% Superwatch Maria, 25% Nylon, 425 metres per 100 grams. So this is all Helen's details here. So that's what I got from Giddy Yarns. Oh, that pen is opened. Okay, uh, let's go with this one. I decided to buy my first ever skein of Fab Funky Fibers. And I got their Hair Hey Cool Cats and Kittens. Or Hey All You Cool Cats and Kittens. Which is a Tiger King reference and I know some of you are very against the Tiger King um, but I just really like the colourway, the way it stripes up, it's really really beautiful and I got the 50 gram with a contrasting mini. So this is 75% merino, 25% nylon, it is super wash, you get 220 metres in this one and I think this is a 20 gram mini. Uh, which is normally 80 meters so yeah those are gonna be awesome socks and then two more orders then I seen oh and Helen was really really generous and popped in three minis which are gonna go in my bag thank you Helen uh, I then seen that Ariel of my mama knits was doing a mystery, mystery yarn buying duda, whichever you want to call it. Oh, sorry, I like going to sleep. Okay, so uh, you could buy 100 grams of mystery yarn or you could buy uh, 100 grams of four ply, 100 grams of DK, or you could do 200 grams and one would be 100 grams and 100 grams of one yarn and then you could buy mystery minis. So I done that. I done the 100 gram skein mystery and then I done the minis totaling 100 grams. So this is my 100 grams and this is really neon. 
Like this is not going to show up in the camera very well, like the true colours. Uh, but this is single batch yarn of her Chifunga base, which is Superwash Merino Sock Yarn. 75% Merino, 25% Nylon. You get 425 metres. And I love this. Like, I really... I'm not a super pink person, but I really, really like this. And it's got paler pinks and then it's got really proper neon. And I'm really curious to see if this will be UV reactive. I'm not 100% sure and it doesn't say on the tag. But I can check that because Scott's Xbox makes it look like a blue light, a black light sometimes. So, yeah, the camera's just not quite getting the pink the correct shade. So that's the 100 grams and then this is the minis that I got. So I'll show you them one by one. So you get this really gorgeous blue. So that's a 10 grammer. I'll show you all the 10 grams first. And I really like this one. This one's really, really subtle. It reminds me of buttercream. So all of these are on her, and I, I don't know if I'm saying it wrong, but they're all on her Chifunga base, which is the same as this one. And then I got two 20 gram ones, which are these gorgeous colors. So just this solid purple. And then this really awesome variegated pinks, blues, purples, um, brown, sky blue, uh, royal blue, neon pink, uh, all on a kind of quite fawn colouring as well. So that's what I got from my Mama Knits. So all those minis are going to be going into a future blanket project which I will discuss at a later date because I don't want to get too excited about it because I can't start it just yet because I'm determined to get my blanket projects down. And my last purchases were from my really good friend Becky of Ovis Yarns. I love Becky. Um, I have a lot of her minis. And they're all going into another different blanket project. So these ones, the first ones I'm going to show off, they're not going to go into this the blanket project I have in mind because these are DKs. I'm actually thinking of maybe designing something with these minis. Aren't they stunning? So this is in her Archie DK's minis, which is 70% BFL, 30% Masham. It's grown, spun and dyed in the UK. These are 10 times 10 grams and you get 25 metres per mini. And I just love these colours. Like These are proper, true, rainbow colours. And you've just got a bit of everything, so you get a wee bit of black. A wee bit of black, um, a dark moss green, a paler green, a nice pink, a teal, a blue, orange, a yellow, a red and a purple. So you just get a bit of everything and I really really like these. So I might make a cowl. I'm not sure. I could definitely have it by my neck. I'm just stroking my yarn now. <laughs> Okay, um, my last acquisition for this time, because I've ordered more minis, is these. So these are Phrase Food. So she has worked with her amazingly gorgeous little boy, and they came up with these colorways. And this is in our Poppy Sock, Poppy Super Sock, which is 75% British BFL and 25% nylon. 
These are 10 gram minis and it's 40 meters. And these are going to be going in the blanket project with all these other minis. So I have two blankets I want to make on top of the five I currently have. And yeah. I need to stop spending. <laughs> but yeah, these are just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous colours. Um, I really, really love them. Um, when I when she seen I'd ordered, she's like, he's going to be so happy. So I hope I made him happy. I hope I made him smile. But I just love these. But I always kind of go to Becky for her minis because I've got so many of them. Um, and therefore, uh, I want to make a pinwheel blanket. I think that's what it's called. It's one where you're kind of making like triangles and you're doing short roads so you start like that and then you work that way and it turns into a square. That's what I want to do with Becky's Minis. I want to make a pinwheel blanket. But I don't think that's the right word. Let me Google really quickly. Let's see. No, it is pinwheel. That's right. Okay. So I want to do a pinwheel scrappy blanket with all Becky's minis um, but this one won't be going in it and this one won't be going in it either because these are DK whereas all the other minis I have from Becky are in her four ply but um, I don't know why I don't want to put this one in it I just feel like this would be better in the next blanket I want to make which is going to be another crochet blanket oh we'll see too many ideas not enough time Okay, so last thing I want to talk about, I purchased a knitting machine, I purchased a sock knitting machine, I purchased it from Ashcroft Makers, uh, it's a 3D printed machine and it's from, it's built and made in Scotland and I ordered it with a 72 needle cylinder because I had checked with some friends, I had done my math and I thought that with the gauge I get on my socks, with the stitch count, I would get the same with a 72 stitch cylinder. Because my only other options were to go to a 60 and I don't know what the one below that is. So I got the 72, it arrived on Tuesday, I assembled it, I ran through a yarn and I got my first sock tube. And it was amazing, I was so happy, I was so pleased. But it's too wide, which is fine, absolutely fine. Uh, you can alter what they call them cams, which alters the height of the needles, which means you can make the needles higher to get a smaller stitch, or you can make the needles lower to get a bigger stitch. So that's your gauge, that's how you would change your gauge. Um, but I didn't know that I rushed to get my first ball of yarn through and this was what came out. Great structure, great sock, just too wide for my foot and too wide for my mum's foot but perfect for Scott's foot. So you'll see that I've already got the ribbing in here and I've got the toe in and I've got the ribbing in this one but I have not got the toe in this one just yet. This one is still on scrap yarn. So this yarn is yarn that Jo kindly sent me when she sent me the bag, uh, which I'm so... But I was just expecting the bag, I wasn't expecting two balls of opal as well, but she does know that I really like my opal yarn. So I decided to run this yarn through it and I thought that'd be really great. Like At the time I thought these would be perfect socks for me because they'll be like memory socks. Uh, so my friend kindly like amazingly kindly sent me two balls of yarn and they would just make perfect socks. Sadly they don't fit. But I do have leftovers. Well, I've still got to do the heels and the toe on this one. But I will have leftovers I can put into my scrappy blanket. So that's better than nothing. And this will be the first pair of socks I'll ever make Scott. Which he's over the moon about. So there was a learning curve with the cams to get the stitches because I nearly threw the machine out the window but that was my fault, that's got nothing to do with the company 
um, but I did then go on and order a 60 stitch cylinder, 60 needle cylinder, which arrived. I haven't used it yet. So this is the first one. I then altered the cams and finally got it to work because if you put the needles too high you drop a ton of stitches which I done a lot and that's what really frustrated me and that's what really made me nearly throw the whole thing out the window now I live on the fourth floor so that that sucker was gonna break um so I finally got the cams to sit where I needed them to be and then I turned out this how cool is this yarn and this is like this is a tighter gauge than the first one so I figured it out I got them to the right height this is still just a little too wide for my foot but this will fit my mum a lot better and it, was, it still fits Scott so I don't need to worry about that I did drop a couple of stitches though when I was uh, cranking this out and I've caught most of them but there are a couple I need to go back and fix like here for example just there I've caught it but I've caught it the wrong way so it looks like a pearl stitch so I need to go back once I cut in for my toes and stuff I might just drop the stitch down and see yeah because it won't be too far from the toe so I'm just halving the fabric so the where I need to fix is just there so I would cut for the toe here and then I would just drop my stitch down pick it back up but it's a learning curve the whole process is a learning curve it's something I've never done before I'm really really happy I went ahead with the purchase though the company are fantastic they're so polite and kind and um there was a delay with the orders because they just got an influx they just got a super massive influx of people wanting their products and especially over lockdown like that was really difficult but for the delay for me was actually I got mine early I wasn't expecting this until the first week in August maybe the second week in August and I got it on Tuesday just gone so I got mine really early which I'm so amazed about and so thankful and then I ordered the 60 inch 60 needle cylinder on Wednesday I think I ordered it on Wednesday and it arrived yesterday so that was really really quick and the customer service is just phenomenal and there is a learning curve like I've I've heard a lot of people aren't quite happy with it and I don't know why I'm over the moon with mine it's just if you alter the cams you risk dropping a lot of stitches if you don't get them to the right position and they state that in their booklet so I just sat and footed around and then when I got too frustrated I walked away and then I came back to it when I was calmer. So everyone's to each to their own though. It might not be for everyone. But I make that many socks. And um, Scott wants them. And he's got big feet. Like he's got wide feet. And I don't want to have to sit in a 72 stitch sock. <laughs> so it's perfect. Like I can make him socks. I can make my mum socks. And I can make myself socks. And all I have to do is put the heels, toes and cuffs in. Win-win situation in my eyes. So yeah. I'm really happy. And it's raining. It's raining hard. And my thing is going to die in like a minute and ten seconds. So thank you so much for watching. Um, thank you so much for waiting on me to record. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. Uh, I have started a blog, by the way, that I want to really get up and running. I want to use it as a alternative to Ravelry right now. I'm gonna stop and re-record two seconds. So my camera has a timer. I have to have everything said by 30 minutes and then it cuts out um, and it was coming up to like 50 seconds. I was just like nah let's just turn it off and start again. So I've started a blog and it's got two posts on it just now and there's no traffic whatsoever and that's fine. And I've started it for a couple of reasons. Uh, about six years ago I had a blog and I done interviews with makers. 
where I would ask them to send a couple of photos and answer some questions and it maybe didn't have the best traffic in the world in terms of numbers coming through but it got them a couple of couple of sales every now and again and it was just something really fun for me to do. Um, so I want to restart that. Now bear in mind this was about six, seven years ago that I had that blog and stupidly I deleted it like last year. Don't know why. So that's a shame because I had everyone's interviews still on it. Uh, so I want to restart that again but I also just want to use it as an alternative to Ravelry because they still haven't pulled their finger out and fixed it for everyone. Um, I personally get ice strain when I use it so I don't go on it very often. Um, so I'd like to make it like that but I also want it to be somewhere where I could maybe put just a few more photos than I would on Ravelry. Uh, like I went into quite a bit of detail um, on my mum's sock. There's a lot more pictures on it. I go into a wee bit more detail about my stitch count um, and so on and so forth and there's some more pictures than there was on my Instagram. So yeah, I'll put all the details in the down bar below. Whether that's your thing or not, I don't know. Uh, but it's just something I've wanted to do. I'm not the best writer. I have dyslexia and I also have something that's called Mears Erlen syndrome, which means I misread a lot of things. I put words in that aren't even there and I read words differently from what is there. So bear with any typos. I try my best. Um, but yeah it's just another outlet for me and it's just somewhere I can go and just put words down. Best description I've got right now. <laughs> but yeah uh, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this podcast. If you have please hit the like button. Uh, the usual spiel that other people use is that it does help get my videos seen across maybe a slightly wider platform. Um, Please come take part in the I am worth it mail. Just whilst we're on that subject, I'm actually co-hosting another mail, but I just need to bring up the details. So bear with me two seconds. Um, so <laughs> sorry. So Laura of the Crochet Hoovian podcast or A Crochet cre Start again. Laura of A Crocheting Hoovian. Why can't I say crocheting? Crocheting. Yeah, that's right, crocheting. Jeez. As of the 5th of July, she was starting out, You are not alone, you are enough make along. And I just thought that was perfect because when she posted that, I was not in a great place mentally. And it was coming up for an anniversary for her and she wanted to kind of commemorate that and make it a positive. I'm not saying it was a negative, but she just definitely wanted to put a positive spin on this. So there is a hashtag you can use, which is hashtag CW, you are not alone 2020. And she's put here, the rules are simple, just create something and show how it has helped you on your journey. And I just thought that was perfect because it really ties in with the I am worth it mail, um, which is hashtag I am worth it mail 2020. So yeah, feel free to join those. I'll put the hashtag and stuff down below and a few more details. I'll put it on my blog as well. I'll put the details to the blog down below. And I really hope you join us and you can post in the comments on the blog, you can post in the comments here, you can use the hashtags, I almost forgot that word, on Instagram and you can also put it on my Facebook page. You can put it on Ravelry but right now I'm not really going on there because it hurts. Uh, but if you use Ravelry and you can still use it, please go on. Every now and again I will check it, maybe like once a week, once every two weeks. Um, but yeah, I really do think that's me this time. <laughs> this is well over and ever long, so thank you so much for sticking with me. Um, and I hope to see you in another two weeks time. Hopefully I don't hold any high hopes. Uh, I thought I could stick with a routine, but my health does kind of throw some curveballs every now and again 
and Sundays, now that I can see Scott at the weekend, Sundays are really the only time I have for recording. Hopefully next time I will have a lot more progress on my two garments and I will have a lot more sock tubes to show off and maybe I might have more progress in some of my blankets so that I can start my next two. Um, hopefully by then you'll also be able to see my last two acquisitions which I only bought yesterday and that's more yarn from Giddy Yarns and it's also some stuff from Knit Me Seam. So until then I will speak to you all later and you can also find me on all the links down below and I hope you'll come and join me. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.